Hello and welcome to today's episode, which is all about taking two vegan complete proteins and making three different things with them. I was chatting to a friend of mine last week and he started going back to the gym, getting into his training. And he was asking me if I knew of any ways of getting a high amount of protein into plant-based food. So I thought, well, we'll have a think and tell him what I can come up with. The human body needs nine essential amino acids in order to sort of function at peak capacity. And the amino acids help things like brain function, cell regeneration, all of that kind of thing. So I thought, oh, maybe do some burgers or a meatloaf, that kind of thing. And then thought, well, why not do three different things just to give people some ideas? So I'm gonna mix up a big batch of mixture and then from that, we can then separate that down and do three different things with it. So I'm gonna make just standard burgers, nice and easy, then do some kind of meatballs. And then I think I'll do some koftas, like a kebab kind of thing, sort of Middle Eastern. That's where they're most popular in places like Turkey, that kind of thing. So heavily spiced, really fragrant and delicious. First step is to break down the tofu. I use the tofu brand, if you're in the UK. Theirs is already pressed, but it does still come in a bit of water. So just snip one of the corners off and just squeeze it out. The recipe for the mixture is based loosely on the chorizo sausages that I made, and which was loosely based on a Gaz Oakley recipe for the sriracha meatballs. It's gonna be tofu, then I'm adding the quinoa, and then there'll be pea protein as a binder. Normally I just crumble the tofu down with my hands and kind of shred it with my fingers, but my hands are really sore today. So I'm gonna try grating it. This is extra firm tofu and I would recommend extra firm if you can get it. It's just got a much meatier kind of texture. So just start rubbing that through. Just gonna go through and mix all of this and just break the shreds down a little bit. As I'm looking at it, I'm wondering if this would make like a good sort of minced beef replacement. What I might try at some point is grating it down, covering it in powdered beef stock and then putting it on a like a baking tray and then bake it 160 to 180, so uh, 325 to 350, and sort of turning it over every five to 10 minutes until everything's a little bit golden in places. I think that might make a quite a nice sort of, yeah, minced beef substitute. Time to start putting everything else in the bowl. So this is the dried onion pieces that I seem to be using quite a lot of at the moment. And I rehydrated them in a tablespoon of tomato puree and like a heap teaspoon of beef flavored stock. So I just thought while I'm rehydrating them, get some flavor in there as well. So I'm just gonna drain that off. I might keep the liquid though, just in case I need it. So this is the equivalent of probably one white onion, one large white onion chopped down. This is white quinoa. Doesn't really matter what color you use. Got 100 grams, that's the raw weight. I'm gonna do a really good grind of black pepper, maybe half a teaspoon, and maybe half a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna do a half teaspoon of MSG, it's monosodium glutamate. So it's like a flavor enhancer. It adds lots of savory flavor, but without lots and lots of salt. I'm gonna start with four tablespoons of mussel beef flavor stock powder. It's just got a very nice beefy richness. I'm gonna do a tablespoon-ish of beetroot powder. Feel free to use cooked beetroot or even raw beetroot if you want, that's fine. I just like the powder because then it doesn't go off. This is all lumpy though, so I'm just gonna run it through a sieve. I'm using the beetroot because it gives a nice kind of earthy, deep flavor, but also for a bit of color as well. I'm gonna do six tablespoons of olive oil to give a nice bit of fattiness. I'm gonna add in an extra teaspoon of onion granules. The onions I use are quite mild in flavor, so I'm just gonna boost them up and do like a teaspoon of garlic granules as well. To start with, I think I'm gonna do two tablespoons of pea protein, and I'm gonna do the same, I think, of vital wheat gluten. So that's the vital wheat gluten. That's what's used to make seitan, like ready-made gluten. If you've seen the wash the flour, steak, chicken, and ribs video, this is that gluten, so that's been dried and powdered. So I'm gonna go in with my hands and give all of this a mix. Now I've got everything mixed, I'm gonna add in a chia seed egg to help bind everything together. This is two teaspoons of chia seeds that I ground down. That becomes roughly two tablespoons and then six tablespoons of hot water. And it forms a really gloopy, gooey substance that helps bind things together. So I'll add that in and then work that into the mixture. It looks very minced meaty, which is a great sign. So let's see how it's holding its shape. I think I might do one more pea protein and one more vital wheat gluten just because it's falling apart a little bit. If you haven't got the pea protein or the gluten, you could use buckwheat flour. That's gonna give a very nice texture. Or at a pinch, you can use just regular flour. Just check to 
to see if that's holding. Because I'm going to air fry it, it doesn't need to hold together as robustly. So I think that might be okay. But I'm going to leave it for a few minutes while I set other things up as well. I'm going to check the flavour. I'm going to add a very light touch of apple cider vinegar, maybe half a teaspoon, just to lift the flavour up a touch, a bit of brightness. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. I'm going to put them on the silicone sheets after I make each one. So I'm just going to put these on the stove. Taking out roughly a third of the mixture, and that'll be for the burgers. So I'm going to make each burger just over 100 grams. That's a little dish of stock that I sieved from the onions. I'm going to use that to wet my hands. Might as well get a bit of extra flavour in. <laughs> just to make things a bit easier so it doesn't stick as much. So I'm kind of compressing it as much as I can. And from there, flattening it back out again. Twisting it, flipping it, just moulding it into shape. So there's the four burgers all ready to be cooked. So I'm just gonna let them sit and chill out for a bit. For the meatballs, I've taken 420 grams just into a separate bowl, because then the rest can be for the kofta's. So we'll start adding extra flavorings into here. The quantities that I'll put in the mixture, just scale them up or down as per the amount of mixture that you've got. So I've got some dried lovage here. So I'm gonna do maybe half a teaspoon of that. It's just a very nice fragrant kind of herb. It goes really nice with potatoes and carrots. I'll do like a teaspoon of mixed herbs. So these are things like basil, oregano, marjoram, thyme, just really nice fragrant sort of Mediterranean herbs. For a bit of a kick, I'm gonna put in some chili <laughs> because why not? So I'll do half a teaspoon. Feel free to skip those if you don't want them. I'm go in and scrunch that up. You don't necessarily have to put any extra herbs in the meatballs if you don't want to. I'm giving you options. And then you can just have that with a sort of fairly basic tomato base sauce. But feel free to do just a very basic mixture here. And then you can do like quite, quite a lot of seasoning and herbs in the tomato sauce. That's fine. And I'm taking about a tablespoon of the mixture. Compress, squidge it. nice little spheres onto the tray. So there's all the meatballs. I've got 20 all together in the end. I've just remembered I'd planned on putting some TVP in here, textured vegetable protein. Um, I've got like two, three tablespoons left in the bottom of the bag. Um, <laughs> that's frustrating. Oh well, next batch I'll do it in there. Last but not least, onto the kofta. I'm gonna put some fresh herbs in my koftas. Totally optional, but it just adds a nice bit of fresh lightness to the flavor. I've been out and picked a bit of mint. So I've got, I don't know, maybe 10 little fresh mint leaves. For fresh herbs, I make a little stack of them all, and it just makes it a bit easier to, to shred them down. And then just very finely shred. Got a nice little pile of fresh mint and do a big handful of fresh parsley as well so that's probably uh, 10 grams i'm just going to pull it all into a bunch i'm going to do stalks and all because i quite like them but feel free to pick it if you want let's go through that a few times i'm going to put some raz el hanout into this one another middle eastern spice blend so this one's got things like black pepper, coriander, ginger, paprika, allspice, cardamom, lots of really nice aromatic spices. You could also use a bit of garam masala or you know you can just use individual spices, feel free. I'll do a heat teaspoon and then I can taste it and add a bit more if it needs it. I'm gonna do a half teaspoon of caraway seeds. This is often in pumpernickel bread. It's hard to describe the flavor, but it's delicious. Very kind of spicy, warm, rich. You could use fennel, anything like that. Give this a squidge. I'm just gonna sprinkle in a little bit of the tomato kind of stock, just for a bit of extra moisture. I've done maybe a teaspoon. It was just looking a little bit crumbly, whereas now it's compacting a bit easier. Let's scatch on a little bit more tomato. Besides, I'm gonna add another touch of Ras Holohanout. I have these skewers left over from some shop-bought kebabs, so I'm gonna use them for three of them. Taking about that much mixture, sort of, you know, a handful, kind of shaping it in my hands like that, kind of cradling it and patting it with my thumbs. And then try and slide the skewer in the middle. And then shape it around the skewer. Yeah, like that. I'll finish off shaping the kofta's and I'm also gonna preheat the air fryer. So I'll see you back in a few minutes. Everything's shaped, ready to go in the air fryer. I've got six of the kofta's in the end. Some are slightly fatter than others, but that's fine. I'm gonna freeze most of that. I'll just do it raw in the freezer and then I can cook them from frozen. Preheated the air fryer at 160. I squirted oil into the basket as it was preheating, just so it can get nice and kind of fatty in there. I think I might do the burgers for three minutes, then put the kofta's in, do it for five minutes 
flip everything over and then put the meatballs in. When I did the protein packed burgers a few months ago, I spread some of this on the outside, which is Kitchat Manis. I'm gonna do the same with these. I'm also gonna mix in some tamarind paste. This has got a very tangy, almost kind of iron flavor, a little bit like steak juice, that kind of taste to it. So I'm gonna mix in some of that as well. This little jar I've had in the fridge for months, you only need a tiny bit, it's very concentrated, but yeah. It's one of those things you buy once and you can use it over the course of a year, if not two. It doesn't really go off that I've ever noticed. I'm gonna mix that with a little bit of soy sauce as well, just to thin it down a touch. Do maybe two tablespoons of the kitchen. This is the tamarind. It's a bit like molasses, that kind of thing. It's made from the tamarind fruit. If I can find a picture, I'll slot one in for you. We'll do maybe a teaspoon of that and then half a teaspoon of soy sauce. Give that a stir and then we'll see what it's like. If you haven't got these ingredients, I'll put together some notes in the video description for you. Mm, that's spot on. The primary function of brushing this on is to give a nice bit of color like you'd get on a burger. But then we're also gonna add in some kind of tangy umami flavors in there as well, which will really mimic meat. This would be really nice to marinate tofu or tempeh, seitan, that kind of thing. Mm. I've just realized I left the air fryer on its default 15 minutes. <laughs> so they've had six. That's actually fine. So I'm gonna pop the two koftas in now and then I'll put that in for, I think I'll give that six minutes and then I'm gonna flip them over. We'll take it from there. Everything's cooked and ready for eating. Mm. <laughs> and I just dropped one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll ignore that, that's fine, things happen. I was trying to do a shot of holding the board up to the camera and one of the kofters rolled off and I grabbed it. <laughs> uh, they're not the most sturdy things, they are a little bit crumbly. Um, so if you want something really heavy that kind of, you know, substantial, add more of the binders and maybe more liquid and that should hold together more. But you are gonna start then getting a very dense product, so I prefer a bit of a crumbly one is fine. And just don't splat it against yourself trying to catch things. So that's the texture inside. So I think that's worked exactly how I hoped it was. A little bit glistening inside. Lots of different bits of interest to chew on. This is a piece of the kofta. This is the one that I dropped. <laughs> They're all gonna look fairly similar inside, but you can see little bits of the, the parsley and mint there. And then that's the inside of a meatball. I will go on the burger. Mm. That tastes fantastic. And the glaze on the outside really mimics like a flame grilled burger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the texture is, it's, I say dry, but I don't mean it sticks in your throat or anything, but it's not juicy. But I think you could easily remedy that. Maybe more oil, and it is, as I bite into it, it's crumbling apart. Maybe another couple tablespoons of each of the binders and Maybe do like 100 mils or just under half a cup of liquid. Maybe do some beef stock, tomato and water, that kind of thing. Just some, you know, or you can just use water, but you might as well get some more flavors going on in there. <laughs> but yeah, it's a very nice eat. That's the inside of the meatball, although hopefully you'll see that on a close up as well. Mm. The herbs kind of lift it and give it some bright freshness as well, which is really good. Can't detect any of the vital wheat gluten flavor, which is great. Mmm, that's really tasty. And then a piece of the kofta. Mmm, that's a shame that fell apart. Mmm, <laughs> that spicy and delicious. Very happy with those. Mm. To finish up the cooking and for doing the glaze, I just used the other can because I needed to charge microphones and stuff. The burgers and koftas, I kept them in there until one side had gone ever so slightly crisp on the top, just so I could pick it up and flip it without it crumbling apart. Flip them over and put the meatballs in and did that for seven minutes at 160. Then I noticed that the burgers and the koftas were going a bit crisp, whereas the meatballs were still quite soft. So I took those out, put them in the microwave to keep them warm. And then once the meatballs had crisped up a little bit, flipped those, did them for like three minutes, then put everything back in the air fryer, did the glaze, and then put them in back in the air fryer at 150 for two minutes, flipped them over, glazed the other side, and then another like three minutes. I think I did the second glaze at 160, just to speed it up a little bit. For the burgers, say, yeah, you wanna be doing like six minutes, five, six minutes each side, and then do the glaze, couple minutes, flip it a couple minutes. Yeah, and then the kofta is a little bit less than that, and the meatballs a little bit less than that. 
well, nice and easy. The remaining items, I put them on a single layer on a tray and then into the freezer. To cook them from frozen, I'll probably do 150 degrees C. You don't want to go too hot because the outside will go really hard and, and crunchy before the inside is cooked. I think from frozen, the burgers, 150, eight minutes each side maybe, something like that. If it starts going really hard, I would maybe drop it down even to 140 in the air fryer. In the pan, I probably wouldn't do it from frozen in a pan. Um, yeah, I think it's just gonna fall apart and just be really crunchy on the outside and a bit mushy on the middle. So I'd either thaw them, or you know, do it like a natural defrost, potentially even do it in the microwave, that might be all right. And then you can always bosh them in the pan for a couple of minutes just to toast them on the outside. That mixture would work really well for a meatloaf. Um, so just grate in some carrots, celery, onions, whatever other bits and pieces you like, maybe some sun-dried tomatoes, that kind of thing. Pack it into a loaf tin and then bake it or air fry it again. Yeah, 160 for 45 minutes to an hour, something like that, maybe 150 for an hour. You know, if it's quite a big solid mass and really press it into the tin really well. Make sure you either grease the inside of the tin really well or line it with foil so then you can invert it and pull the foil off or grease proof paper, that kind of thing. Because you just don't want to get it wedged in there and not be able to get it back out again. Because that would be a nightmare. <laughs> Hit subscribe and tap the bell icon for more evidence that you can satisfy your back teeth without any meat. And then head over to this one.